What's up guys? Justin here with the SketchupEssentials.com back with another back with another SketchUp quick model for you. So today we're going to take an image and we're going to use it to create a pattern that we're going to apply to a face in SketchUp. So let's go ahead and just jump into it. Alright, so I haven't gone through and tested this or anything like that, so I'm kind of interested to see how it's going to turn out. But what we're going to do is in this case what I have is I have an image file of a pattern that I want to import, I want to create the pattern, and then I want to apply it to a face to create kind of a wood carving type look. So uh, let's kind of see how this turns out. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to come in here. We're going to go to File, Import, and we're going to import our image. So in this case, I've got this kind of like Celtic pattern shape. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to import this as an image. The other way you could do this is you could create a face and then import it as a texture. For right now, I'm just going to import it as the image though. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to click import. And then when I click import, SketchUp is going to bring this in and it's going to ask me to set the first point of my image. So I'm just going to click somewhere in this model. And I'm just going to kind of size this. So in this case, I'm figuring I'm probably going to want to create about a three foot by three foot box. So you see how in the corner it says width. I'm just going to type in three foot and hit the enter key. That's going to bring this image in as a three foot by three foot image. And so if I measure this, it's going to be three foot by three foot because this is a square image. I'm going to go ahead and remove my default model. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to rotate this because for whatever reason it brought it in standing up. I'm just going to use the rotate tool um, to rotate this so that it's laying flat. So all you're going to do is you're going to activate the rotate tool by tapping the Q key. And you're going to tap the right arrow button to lock this to the red axis. We'll click on this corner, click on this other corner, and then lay it down. So you're just going to rotate that 90 degrees and then you're just going to take this corner and you're just going to you're going to move it over so that it uh, is right on this uh, origin point. And you don't need to do that. That's more just something that I do when I'm modeling. And you can see how when I look at this um, when I look at this pattern, what it is is it's a symmetrical pattern. And so since it's a symmetrical pattern, what I'm going to do is I'm only going to model a quarter of it and then I'm going to rotate or create rotated copies so that I have three additional copies. So all I'm going to do is I'm just going to split this up by drawing some lines across it. So I'm just drawing lines from the midpoint to the midpoint. And we're just going to go in here and we're just going to model on this real quick. And so basically you're just going to come in here and you're going to trace these pieces is all that you're going to do. So and the nice thing about this is you can come in here and if you accidentally make something too small, you can use the move tool to kind of move it over. And so it's very simple. All that we're doing is we're just modeling geometry on top of all of these different faces. And you can see how I'm kind of trying to keep all my inferences. I'm trying to keep everything all lined up, first of all, but I'm also using inferencing to try to make sure that I keep everything along the red and green axis wherever I can. So you can see how whenever I draw, whenever I can, I'm drawing along the red and green axis. So like perpendicular or uh, so you see how I'm moving my mouse so that this is locking the green line in here. And uh, you can hold the shift key in order to lock these to the axes while you're drawing. So if you move your mouse so that this is on the red axis and then you hold the shift key, then no matter where you move your mouse, you're going to stay on the red axis. So I'm just going to go in and complete drawing in these patterns and then we'll talk about what to do with them. So and then once you've drawn your pattern in here just go back and kind of take a look and see if uh, you kind of left anything out or like for example this this object clearly extends over this edge a little bit so I'm gonna go ahead and draw that in so that everything's in here the way that it shows up in this pattern. And then once you do that, what you can do is I'm going to model all of this in here as a component. And so what that means is I'm going to come in here and I'm going to double click on all of these and select them. And 
and then I'm going to right click on it and I'm going to click make component and we'll just call this pattern quarter and hit the enter key. So now that's in here as a component. That means if I make a copy of it, then anything I change on one copy will change on the other copies as well. And so now what we're gonna do is we're gonna use the rotate tool in copy mode to rotate this around and make a couple copies. But before we do that, we're gonna save our model um, because anytime you use the rotate tool in copy mode, for some reason SketchUp gets a little, uh, it gets a little shaky. Um, I, I've had it crash more often doing this than anything else that I've done. I'm not really sure why, but it just that's kind of the way that it works. Anytime you're going to use the rotate tool in copy mode, you need to make sure you save first. All right, so once you save this, what you're going to do is you're going to activate the rotate tool by tapping the Q key, and you're going to move your mouse over this center point. And the reason that we're going to use this center point is because when we drew this, we knew this was going to be the exact center of our model. And then all you do is you just activate the rotate tool by clicking on the center, move your mouse over to this corner, and you can see how when I move my mouse, right now it's moving this object. Well, instead of moving, what we want to do is we want to tap the control key. And when we tap the control key, see? And that's why we need to save our model when we're using the rotate tool in copy mode. All right, so this is back open again. We're going to do the same thing. Um, just click on the center point, move your mouse over here, tap the control key to put this in copy mode and what you're going to do is you're just going to type in 90 degrees so 90 degrees will make it so that this is all lined up so you're going to type in 90 and hit the enter key and you can see how that made a copy of your object and before you click on anything else what you're going to do is you're going to type in times times two or times three so you're going to type in the times symbol and you're going to type in times three and that means instead of making one copy SketchUp is going to come in here and it's going to create three copies and so you can see how each copy was at 90 more degrees so now you have four quarters of this object so now if you come in here and you uh, push pull one of these objects you can see how it's going to adjust all of those objects at once um, because these are all copies of the same component so now what you can do is you can come in here and I'm going to actually create kind of a border around all of these objects and so what I'm doing is I'm just coming back in here and I'm just drawing a line around the edges here and you can see how that's showing up in the other edges as well so that I can come in here and I can create a little bit of a border so and probably you don't need it to be as wide as this edge piece so you can really do whatever you want with it here so in this case I'm gonna make it a one inch border And then I'm going to do the same thing over here. We're going to make this a one inch border and then erase out this piece. And so now what you have is first of all, I'm going to come in here and I'm going to take my image and I'm going to hide it. So I'm just going to right click on it and I'm going to click hide. So now that image is kind of gone. You can come in here and you can erase out all these guidelines. You don't really need those anymore. And then what we're going to do is you can see here how we've got our quarters. Well, what I want to do is I want to draw a line to the middle so that this fills in as a face. So you can see how when I did this, this face filled in. Well, now when we do that, we're going to be able to quickly recess this by clicking and dragging this down. And you can see how there's at least one area where that's a little bit of a problem, and that's right here. And the reason for that is because this little intersection isn't getting picked up in this face. So all we're going to do is we're just going to come in here and we're just going to draw around that edge here and also around this edge here. You can see how now this is kind of a separate face. And so what we're going to be able to do by doing this is we're going to be able to use the push pull tool to push this down to create kind of our recess. And so in this case, we're going to push this down a quarter inch. So when you push this down a quarter inch, now you've got this kind of recessed face in here. And you can come in here in any of these uh, pieces and you can erase out this extra geometry. And you're probably going to have to do that twice because the geometry is kind of overlapping in here. But you can see how when I erase that out, now I've got this nice border along here. And the problem that you have is that this, these lines are left over. 
um, and so they make this look kind of choppy. So what you're going to do is you're going to use the erase tool and you can't erase these. So you don't want to erase these edges, you want to hide them. So what I'm doing is I'm just coming in here and I'm holding the shift key to turn these lines into hidden geometry. And you're probably going to have to go in and do that a couple times just because of the way that these segments kind of overlap. But all I'm doing is I'm using the erase tool and I'm holding shift and clicking and dragging across these lines. And then now if I click out of this object, then uh, these are a lot smoother. So, and you can do the same thing with these edge lines in here where you can just hold the shift key and drag across them to hide them so that you can make everything so that these intersection lines don't actually show up. So this is a smooth pattern. So you can see how now I've got this smooth pattern in here. And you could come in here and you could start reversing faces or if you wanted to, you could apply materials. So in this case, I'm just gonna drag my mouse across this whole thing, right click and click reverse faces. And so you could come in here and you could make this deeper if you wanted to, um, to make this more pronounced. So if I wanted to push this down another three quarters of an inch, I could just use the push pull tool in order to do that. So, and the other thing you could do that might make this look a little bit better is you could use an extension that we've talked about before called round corner. And what round corner does is it kind of bevels different edges. And so um, I'll link to that in the notes up above or down below but basically what we can do is we can click inside one of these uh, segments and we can use that extension called round corner to come in here and round those off and before I do that I'm gonna save my model again but what you can do is you can just come in here and you can select all the different faces whoops by holding the shift key and clicking on them once you have all those faces you can select this option for bevel with round corner and you can set how wide the bevel is but you can see how this shows you exactly where it's going to bevel the edges and the one thing I missed when I kind of set all this up is if you remember these edges right here or these faces right here that kind of overlap also need to get selected so make sure that you've selected everything when you do this We'll work on that in a second. But if I go ahead and select that, you can see how what that did is that came in here and that beveled all those different edges. And you know, maybe what you'll want to do in this case is you'll want to come in here. Oh, I see. So you see what the problem is, is I actually modeled this piece of geometry in a different component. So I accidentally modeled this edge in here as a part of this component. And that's not what I want, so I'm just gonna use the push-pull tool to kind of get rid of that. So I'm just gonna come in here, I'm gonna push-pull that down. I'm gonna erase out that extra geometry. And then I'll just come over here in this object and draw this back in. There we go, now this will work a lot better. So you can just hold the Shift key, select all these objects. And activate bevel and click outside of it to bevel all the edges so you can see how now these are in here as beveled edges and then you could do some other things in here as well um, you could use some other extensions to kind of round everything off if you wanted to so like you could come in here and I'm gonna go ahead and make this a group and I'm actually going to explode these so that they're not components anymore. So this is just regular geometry. All right, so I'm just using another extension called Fredo Scale, which I've talked about in the past, and I'm using an option in here called Radial Bend. So all I'm doing is I'm coming in here, and Radial Bend is the last option on here, and I'll link to a tutorial about this up above. But I'm just clicking on this corner, clicking on this other edge, and I'm clicking on this other edge again to set a target point. And you can see how as I drag my mouse, it's allowing me to set kind of a rotation angle. And the only thing I don't like about this extension is for some reason it does not 
always let you bend everything the right direction. So it kind of fights you on that for some reason. I'm not really sure why. So I'm going to click at 180 degrees. I'm going to let this come in here and slice everything up. And then now, if you look at this, you've got this cool pattern shape that you've created. So you could stand this up if you wanted to and then probably make it copy using the move tool. And then I'm just going to flip it with the scale tool and move it back. So if you wanted to create kind of like a cylinder or a cup or something like that with this face on it, um, you could definitely use this workflow to create something like that. Leave a comment below and let me know what you thought. Uh, did you follow this workflow? Does it give you some cool ideas or some stuff you could do? I just love having that SketchUp conversation with you guys. If you like this video, please remember to click that like button down below. If you're new around here, remember to click that subscribe button for new SketchUp content every week. If you like what I'm doing in this channel, please consider visiting my support me page on my website to support the show. That's the sketchupessentials.com slash support. But in any case, thank you so much for taking the time to watch this. I really appreciate it, and I will catch you in the next video. Thanks, guys.